Cool. Okay, just ask, is anyone epileptic? <laughs> Tonight, because there's a few gifts in it. <laughs> no? No, not yet. Cool. Okay, so uh, I'm going to split this up into two parts tonight. Uh, the first part, I'm going to go over like the workflow and start setting up a project, and I hope this stops flickering. Um, and then the second part will be about a project I've actually worked on and some of the sort of things that I encountered on that project and how sort of overcame. So, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Simon Owen, I'm with a bank called Manchester Fred. Uh, normally I get people to speak, but it's their thought of, well, I've done that enough now and I thought I'd give it a go myself. Um, so, if you want to please hashtag about the event tonight, hashtag MCR Fred. Uh, you can follow MCR underscore thread for all the latest news uh, and there's various information on that link there. Also, these slides will be available after I'll do a blog post about this. And um, also, if you've got any questions, you know, direct them to me on Twitter or send me an email or something like that, and then I'll try and collate everything together so we can have it on blog post. Um, so, yeah, I just want to thank the sponsors as well. So, uh, Fred Tech Hub for them to use their space tonight. Uh, Carbon Creative, where I work, and um, also they've got the t shirts for all this sort of so if anyone wants a t shirt, uh, ask me afterwards. Um, Firefox and GitHub as well, so it's great to have them as the sponsors and also be able to be able to do this. So if you wouldn't mind just tweeting them as well, if you enjoyed the event, just thanking them as well, if you possibly. That'd be cool. So we have gifts, we have gifts. And uh, I'm just going to say this is the disclaimer to start off with. Um, this is just one approach. It's one way that I'm doing things, there's loads and loads of different ways of doing things. This might not work for everyone, but hopefully when, uh, at the end of it you'll have got at least like, hopefully one thing from it that will uh, help you out. Um, so, this is a way to park a car. So I'm basically uh, saying here that there's different ways to do things. So this is a way of parking a car. This is one way of parking a car. This is another way of parking a car. So one more time, that's cool. And then this is another way of parking a car. <laughs> so <laughs> although there's different ways of doing things, some of them are better than others. So at the minute, the web's moving really fast. There's loads of awesome people doing loads of awesome things. And um, there's loads and loads and loads of things to learn. Uh, for those of you that came to the Ben Frame talk, we saw it address this. You can't learn everything, there's just too much for any one of us to know. Um, but let's not panic about it, okay? Because we all know. And these are some of the things that I use to help me. So um, my colleagues here will know that I, have, uh, I use dot files. Um, does anyone have a dot files repo? Ready? Update? One person. Okay. It's fancy. Um, but hopefully, um, uh, like I said, these slides will be available. Uh, doc files are built, uh, a tutorial on Next Choose Plus, and I'll be going through some of the advantages of doc files and why I use them and why they're cool. Uh, version control, does so everyone use version control? Like it or let's see. Yes, that's 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 what I'm looking for. Loads of uh, So I'm just going to go over some like tooling, um, working locally as well. And um, just wrote down there as well, improving with each project. So we've all got client deadlines. There's no way that we can sort of say, right, let's learn everything now. Or do I think I'm going to go into whatever you want to play on? You're never going to be able to learn it all and be able to apply it all to one project. So all you've got to obviously like get something out at the end of it. Uh, try and just improve that process with each uh, project that you do. So these are some things that I use. Uh, Node, NPM, Yeoman, uh, Bower, Gulp, and Grunt. Um, in this project, I didn't actually use uh, Grunt, uh, sorry, Gulp, uh, but now I'm sort of using Gulp now on another project. So, just to reiterate, you know, like, these things are moving really quick. I knew Grunt could get the task done that I wanted it to for this project, so I stuck with that because I knew that it was uh, something that I could use and it was going to get the job done. Now, I've uh, finished that project and I've gone to the next project, investigated Gulp. Find out that that can do things a bit better. 
in certain scenarios. So let's step into the terminal. Who uses the terminal on the iTerm or MAMA or loads? Great. Awesome. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the terminal, uh, and basically um, you get this dollar, and that's like a default character in terminal. And uh, it doesn't have to be the dollar, you can change it. So this is like dot out tip number one. In my dot bash prompt file, I have this little bit of code, and uh, that's really small. Just trying to zoom in out. Basically, I have this little ASCII character there now with a bolt of lightning. I like to think that he sort of you know, helps me out right in my code. Um, so, yeah, anything going forward, any bit of code that sort of starts with a dollar, um, that's like something that you write into. And who has ever copied and pasted something into the terminal, first enter with a dollar sign? Yeah, so I'm not the only one, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, so, another little handy shortcut that you can use uh, within dot files. This again, it's, can you see that at the back? Sorry about this. Um, it looks okay on my screen, but obviously I'm not sure about on the slides. Like I said, these will be available after. But uh, what I'm doing here is setting up a function called mkd, and I'll be able to run that directly from the terminal. And what it's going to do is Do you see that? <laughs> there you go. How about that? So, what that did is when I do mkd site names up there, it created that directory. But not only did it just create the directory, it actually went into that directory as well. So from now in the word, I want to be. I, I love that stuff. So. <coughs> Whoops. So, node. Uh, this is one thing that sort of confused me when I first started. And that's uh, some things you can only install once, you install them globally. And once you install them globally, you don't really need to worry about them. You might need to update them every time, time to time. And then there's other things that sort of live more uh, just within your actual folder or your project that you work in. So, Node is one of these one time installations. You install that. Once you've installed Node, then you can use uh, Node Package Manager. And if you do uh, npm install uh, with flag minus g yo, then that's going to install Yoman for you. But not only that, Yoman has dependencies that run bow as well, so it will then go and install those for you as well globally. Um, unless you are like a really old version of npm. So if you use this, you should really count that problem. Um, so that's not <laughs> Get rid of, make that full screen. So this is a quick example I've put together. So I'm creating my folder. I'm going to yo which shows you all the generators that they've got. I've selected the generator and what I want in it. So it's like bootstrap modernizer there, so you can select which bits you want. Uh, once you've selected that, it just goes through and it does everything for you. So it's running like Bower install and the FPM installs, which is basically collecting everything there for you within that project, ready to get set up with it. And it's taking a bit of time for modernizer, but it's just downloading everything and it's doing checks, making sure everything's running. And everything's done. And then um, what I'm doing here is just L, and then I use this thing called tree to make sure that. All my files are there, and it's all ready to go. And you can run plum serve. When you've done plum serve, it brings up uh, a local host for you, and now you're ready to go. So you've got a site up and running there quick. Okay, so why would you want to do this? Well, just hang on a sec, I'll get to that in a minute. But what's uh, that's done as part of the installation? Is it's created three files for it. Um, now you've got package.json file, and that handles all of your node uh, package management. Uh, Bower.json, that handles everything in Bower, and Grunt, which handles, uh, so Grunt file.js, which handles the Grunt. Now, uh, at this point, I'll also mention that, you know, it might be a bit overwhelming if you've never done anything like this before. It's a lot to take in. But um, what I mentioned in uh, a previous talk as well is that, you know, once you've got that information, you sort of 
got an overview of something that you know is possible, and if you think it's you know advanced just to you, then you can obviously then go back and research. You know, feel free to tweet me or send me uh, an email, um, and obviously you can go over these slides as well at leisure. So this is the npm package.json file. Uh, Bower.json file and Gwent file.js. I'll go into these in a bit more detail in the code. Um, and then also, now you've got all this on your local system, you can then start editing your files, build up your website, uh, commit those to GitHub, and then also it means that then you can, uh, say, if you're collaborating with someone else, they can then bring that uh, to their local machine as well and pull up all of the changes that you've made. And then they can run this. Again, it's a bit smaller. But so they run an NPM install, a Bower install, and a Glunt serve. And then that'll just handle everything. It'll go and get everything for you. So you don't have to keep going up and getting. So let's, I'll give you an example of this. Let's say one is HTML5 ship. So that's something that's going to help uh, all the browsers understand HTML5. So, ordinarily, you'd search Google for it, you'd go and find it, find out the link where you can download it, download it locally to your machine, then you'd move it to your project where you wanted it to be included in, and then you had to include the link to it. So that's the way to do it, right? Because now we have Bower. So with Bower, go back into the terminal, and we can do Bower search, so we can search for what we're after. They also have a, or has a website as well, so you can actually search for this on the website as well. So you find something that you're after. Um, the website gives you a bit more information, like how many people have downloaded it, what they like to that sort of thing. So once you found out the dependency that you're after, you can go out, bow install, paste them all ship, and then put dash dash save. And what that does is it means that not only now do you have that uh, the HTML5 ship, in your Bower Components folder, but it's also saved the line of code, the latest version. I think it's latest version. Yeah, that goes into your Bower.json file. It's automatically added that to your Bower.json file. Awesome. So it means that um, it means that then the next person that comes to uh, get the, the pull from your changes, they can just do Bower, Bower and stop, and it'll install that new dependency for them. So you don't have to go and search it, don't have to come bring it in. Over that. So that's awesome. Um, so one extra thing as well is you can write like a little comment as well. So you can have all of your power components in one uh, sort of comment, and then when you do a run build, then what will happen is it uh, will do automatic stuff. It basically minifies it all, concatenates it, so just in one file. So rather than having to do loads of HTTP requests, it's just doing the one. So yeah, I love this thing. So. Uh, two other files that we as well, I think, are very important. Um, the docs editor config file. So, um, who's used Sublime? Is that just the idea? Oh, I don't know if everyone any of you uses anything different. What are you using? Sorry, keep it quiet. Sorry? PHP star. Anyone else? Coda. Yeah, cool. So you can do similar sort of things and show Coda has this as well. Um, but this basically shows that everyone's using the same sort of configuration. So there's, you know, since the dawn of time, people have been arguing about spaces and tabs and you know, two four and some weird people use three. Um, but this basically allows you to just set some defined rules that everyone can use in the same code. Uh, another one is to do just ignore file. So one of the great things about doing something like having bower.json in there and all of your dependencies and things like that is that there's no point in including like all your dependencies like jQuery, modernizer, whatever, in your repository. So you can just have them handled by Bower. So you can have like two lines of code rather than having the entire repo in your repo. So it makes it a lot easier to manage and it's a lot going to keep the repo nice and small. Um, yeah, and similar sort of thing with uh, SAS as well, using like a CSS preprocessor. Uh, there's no point in including your CSS because it's going to get created for you. Uh, 
get us slightly better. Um, again, like to say, to reiterate this, these will be available. I know it's a bit smaller, but um, what this is is in Sublime. Um, you've got your preferences, user settings. So there's a lot of useful stuff that you can get out of this file. Uh, certain things like trading white space, which I'll go into, and also like saving uh, the end of line, on a, the new end of line on file save. So it can just handle all those sorts of things for you. And there's loads and loads and loads of configuration you can do, which is really good. So trading white space. Who doesn't know what trading white space is? Okay, so trailing white space is um, little spaces. So as you're coding up, you can like let's say you've got a tag and you create a tag. At the end of it, there might be like loads and loads and loads of spaces at the end, and you don't need those spaces. And if you were to add something at the end of it, then you can get confused because suddenly you can be, be like at the end of the file, and you're not sure, or the end of the line, sorry, and you're not sure where you are. You're wondering where where you are, and what's going on. So it's really good to avoid trailing white space. Um, if you're using Sublime Steps, you can get a plugin which will highlight it and you can it to something that I do. So, when I generally am looking at a new repository that I'm downloading off GitHub and I'm looking over projects, if I see a load of paint, then straight away my, I'm thinking, oh, does this gap? You know, I don't know like, what they're doing here. You know, and I think it's just one of those little things that just means, I don't know, I'm just picking it. <laughs> I really just don't like trading my skills. So, you can set up a key binding that will basically. Uh, take that out, or you can actually, in the previous file there as well, you can uh, have it automatically take all of that out on save as well. Uh, another thing you can do as well is like show um, show the white space. So uh, I know it's a bit hard to see here, but basically you've got like little dots here as well, and you've got like a line for tabs, so it just shows you um, what's being used there. Um, so I mentioned about packages, so with Sublime Text, um, one of the things you have to do is go to this link and um, basically install this package manager that you run this crazy long code in console for Sublime, and then you can just install all your packages, so there's tons of them. And uh, I've just got a little link there as well uh, to some of the packages that I use in Sublime Text. Um, so I've just done a bit of video here. Play this for you. Whoops. This was called um, Zen Coding. It's now called Emmet, and this is a package for Sublime Text. So it enables you to write code really quickly. Um, <clears throat> so here I'm writing header with an ID of site header. Uh, within that, a H1 with a class of logo. Within that, a href with uh, sign name in it, and then just click tab and it creates it all for you. And you can just have like tags like UL, LI, A. And the really nice thing with when you do uh, an A as well and tab is that it brings you here so you can add your link in. Then you can hit tab again, it brings you into this so you can just add your title. So you don't have to keep pressing right and left, it'll uh, just take you to where you need to go. It's really, really helpful. And it works with like CSS and SAS as well. So rather than having to type out like a flow like FL, um, margin zero, I'm having to type the whole thing out, just do M zero, tab it, and it will just do it all for you. So once you learn these shortcuts, just speed up like, so quick. Like, who's using like, that sort of workflow? I mean, yeah, I feel it's just saves loads of time. Um, we've got here. Okay, so um, if you're working locally, you're probably familiar with these three files and other files, you've got different sort of setups. But the basic premise here is, if you're using these configuration uh, files, then you can create a project within Sublime Text as well. So you add all these files that you're uh, working on, set up the project so you can easily flip to it. Um, I'm quite lucky, I've got like, a massive iMac with like a, an equally big uh, dual monitor as well, so I have like, generally, I have the project set up all the time with these sort of files that are available to me. I can just flip to it. Uh, but another little handy shortcut is um, Control Command P, which allows you to just quickly switch between three projects. So if you're working on your project folder, mm -hmm. switch to your configuration and switch back again. Um, so that's something I find useful. Uh, another thing that I've done here is I've, I've got like a short URL as well. And I just set up these little short URLs so I can do paths. And I've got this is like a, a gist and GitHub with um, basically all the path locations. So basically, I get them and I can just copy them. I think it's a 
match it G, you can find it, you can paste it in and go straight to it. Um, another little thing I do is because I'm working on loads and loads of sites in my hosts and uh, feed hosts files is uh, who's familiar with Markdown as well? Yeah, quite a lot. So uh, Markdown, uh, go and look it up if you're not familiar with it, it's just awesome. It basically allows you to uh, write HTML but within like little code snippets. So for example, instead of having to do like H1 tag and enclose them, you can just do like a hashtag and uh, two hashtags for like H2 and then standard key tags for it. I wouldn't know my blog and Octopus it's completely done in Markdown, it's really, really quick. And it's just awesome to learn. So uh, as well as that, um, in your host file, it adds a Slack in. So apt, so it has like a comment, so it won't get called. So if you've got like loads and loads and loads and loads of sites, um, I have just like have like an alphabet going down the side as well, so I can just search and I can just, it's just a lot easier to find and sort of navigate in that document. And similar sort of thing with my group hosts. So. Um, so some more stuff that I've got in my doc files here as well. Um, so I used this when I first did the Gilman one, but um, L is quite handy. And uh, I've only really started over like past year to so sort of going more and more into terminal. And every time I use it, it's just more and more that I find. Um, from doing the doc files, uh, post actually learned like loads and Matthias uh, also like ones a very really, really popular uh, doc files repo helped me out quite a lot. And what I'm finding now is that because I'm learning more things about like user permissions and this and the other, I'm going back to look at my doc files and it turns out there's actually things there that he's already set up, but now I actually know what you need and what you did. So um, L is the one that I use quite a lot and it just lists out uh, in a nice colour all of the uh, like files that are in your current work you have in the, uh, so folder. And um, it just puts like the permissions and who's uh, <coughs> the owner of it. Files and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Really handy. Um, S, I've got that short but it's subtle space top, and that basically is going to open as a working directory in Sublime Text. So, again, it's really, really quick. So, especially like working with something like ITER, let's say you've just run, uh, got your yield with the money, you can put the site with money, then um, go side by side, go back to the ITER process, and now you've got like, files ready to work on straight away as well. So, it's a nice little time saver. And also, when you're in um, Sublime Text, you can do Command T and then you start typing out the file. So, let's say if you want to put the header, you can just start typing it out and you can jump to it. Command T, go to your foot to start typing out and just start pairing. It's a really, really quick way of sort of clicking between the files that you're working on. Um, SAS, who is SAS? So, um, with SAS, um, there's, you know, SAS is just worth another. Talk itself. Uh, there's loads of awesome stuff you can do with it, like variables, nesting, mixes, and things like that. So just go and check out SAS, it's really cool. And when you're doing a run and watch, um, that's set up, um, anything that you're doing in SAS will automatically um, be compiled for you to CSS. Um, I thought I had a different slide there. Maybe it's moved. <laughs> okay, so um, viewport sizes. There's loads of them. So, um, Dan Donald uh, was there last, last month. He spoke about um, album queries and this sort of thing. And something that I saw when um, these sort of media queries first came about is you see media queries like you know iPhone or Galaxy Samsung or tablet. And People are basically specifying like these widths, assuming that they're devices, which um, it's been blogged about quite a bit now. But you know, just want to reiterate the fact that you know, just because it's a certain dimension, does not mean it's that device. For example, if I was just to change my viewport to the exact uh, dimensions of a particular device, it would magically make that device on touch screen. For example. So that's a really bad way of doing things. So with SAS, you can create uh, partials as well. Um, for this pro particular project, um, I created partials uh, for each one of my media queries that I wanted. But uh, as I mentioned there, there's loads and loads of different sizes, and I didn't want to uh, do the dimension for each one, it's just silly. So 
So it's basically starting off small, going a bit bigger, a bit bigger again, a bit bigger, and then large. So I like to do it because I like Star Wars. Start up with a Jawa, go up to a Tonton, Blanca, Bantha, and I'll sort of call um, So, just to reiterate as well, that this was a project I was working on solely, really. Um, so, I wouldn't recommend this if you're working with like, people who don't understand Star Wars, because you're going to get a bit confused. Um, but like, there's loads of different naming conventions out there. Please just don't use Star Wars. Um, Chrome Dev Tools. We use it to Chrome Dev Tools. Okay, so um, mine's black. Um, so uh, I code. I like, spend loads and loads and loads of hours every day coding, and I find that if I'm coding in a white background, like it's not as nice. I 